Oh, you're a dog outside. I wonder if that's Rosie. Okay, I'm gonna take roll. Alrighty, maybe some people will show up. Alrighty. I can't, I'm on Zoom. All right, give me a holler if you're here. Raina. Here. Zach. Here. Alexis. Here. Caleb. Here. Sarah. Here. Gabe. Here. Lily. Here. Tucker. Here. Grayson. Here. Corina. Here. The Gibster. Elijah. Ella. Here. William. Here. Bailey. Here. Sophia. Here. Jaden. Here. Morgan. Here. Jordan. Here. Audrey. Here. Hope. Gib, are you here? Sorry, I accidentally went to the storm study link. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, Gibbs, your middle name. Is that after a grandfather? Yep. Oh, cool. All right. Wish mine was after a grandfather. Mine's after nobody. It's very sad. All righty, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody. We are going to, I'm in the process of correcting your limit definition derivative. And um, um, I'm gonna go through and I will put the answer key online today. And this video will be online this evening. So if you need to see that explanation, you'll be able to do that, okay? And so I'm gonna share my screen or attempt to. You guys see my screen? See this paper? Yeah. Yeah. It's crooked. It looks crooked to me. There we go. All righty. I've had to use a multitude of pens today. So um, define a derivative. A derivative is the slope of a tangent line. and instantaneous rate uh, state the two definitions limit definitions of a derivative the first one now you can use there use h or delta x i'll use delta x in this case and it's f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x and the second one, this gives us, by the way, the general derivative or the derivative formula.
And the next one is the limit as x approaches c, some constant of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. And this gives us a numeric derivative. It gives us the actual slope. All right. Uh, the first one, they ask you to use the limit definition. So I'm going to take the limit as I will choose h to begin with. As h goes to zero, so I have, well, I'm going to put in f of x plus h. Well, no matter what I put into this function, I'm going to get a negative 4 because it's always constant. So it's going to be a negative 4 minus a negative 4 over h. And so that's the limit as h goes to 0 of 0 divided by h. Now, you can't write 0 over 0. You're never allowed to do that for any reason at all. But h isn't 0. It's going to 0. So I have 0 divided by 0 0.1, 0 divided by 0 0.001, 0, 0 divided by 0 0.00000001. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and all of those give me 0 as that, which makes sense because if I have that graph, at a negative 4, I know the tangent line coincides when it's, when it's a line. And since that has a slope of 0, the tangent line has to have a slope of 0 also. All right, the next one, like I was telling the other class, you should see that the derivative of this is 5. So we better get 5 as our answer. So I'm going to do the same type of thing. I'm going to use delta x in this case. And I'm going to have 5 times x plus delta x plus 1 minus parentheses 5x plus 1. So this is f of x with x plus delta x in it. And this is it's minus f of x all over delta x. And then on the side, I'm going to do some algebra. I'm going to have 5x plus 5 delta x plus 1 minus 5x minus 1 over delta x. Well, 5x minus 5x is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. So now I'm left with 5 delta x over delta x. I can simplify delta x. And you, I need to see this limit in your work. As the limit as delta x approaches 0 of 5 is 5. Letter C. I'll use h this time. So I have the limit as h goes to 0 of a negative 3 times x plus h, that quantity squared, plus x plus h plus 5, minus parentheses, a negative 3x squared plus x plus 5, all of that over h. And now I'm going to do a little algebra over here. I get negative 3. I'm going to expand this. This gives me x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus x plus h my, oh, plus 3x squared minus x minus 5 all over h. And then I get negative 3x squared and negative 6xh. Uh, negative 3h squared plus x plus h plus 3x squared minus x minus 5 all over h. And the negative 3x squared are gone. The x's are gone. And I forgot my 5 right here, so I know that has to be gone. So that was a mistake. And I'm left with one, two, three terms. This is an easy one to miss right here, this lone h. And so I'm going to factor an h out of each of those terms. And I'm going to get a negative 6x minus 3h 
plus 1 all over h. And that simplifies. So now I'm going to take the limit as h goes to 0 of a negative 6x minus 3h plus 1, and I get a negative 6x plus 1. And if I use the power rule, 2 times a negative 3 is a negative 6. That exponent drops down to 1. And this has an exponent of 1. 1 times 1 is 1. This will be raised to the 0 power, which is also 1. And sure enough, it matches up. So this one I should get 3x squared plus 2 is my final answer. And I'll put delta x in this one. And so I'm going to take the limit as delta x approaches 0 of x plus delta x cubed plus 2 times x plus delta x minus parentheses x cubed plus 2x all over delta x. Whew, a cube starts out as x cubed, then followed by this coefficient of 3. The x drops down an exponent, and I get delta x, plus another 3, drops down another exponent to 1, and delta x goes up to 2, plus delta x cubed. So that's just this, plus 2x, plus 2 delta x, minus x cubed, minus 2x, all over delta x. So the x cubes are gone, the 2x is gone, and I'm left with 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. And I'm going to factor out a delta x, and I'm going to have 3x squared plus 3x delta x plus delta x squared. Sorry, I just had a brain pause there for a second. Plus 2. I did not give myself enough room over delta x. So I'm going to take the limit as delta x approaches 0 of 3x squared plus 3x delta x plus delta x squared plus 2. And I get that'll be 0, that'll be 0. I'm left with 3x squared plus 2, which is what I believe to be true. The back side. I'll use h this time. So I'm going to have the limit as h goes to 0 of the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x all over h. I'm going to multiply by the conjugate and the reason I'm multiplying by the conjugate is in the numerator it will get rid of those square roots. So when I do that I'm going to have x plus h minus x. No middle term. Just those two being multiplied together, those two being multiplied together. Over h times the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Well, x minus x is 0. h plus 0 is h. And h over h is 1. So now I have the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x, which gives me the square root of x plus the square root of x, or 1 over 2 times the square root of x. f, g, and 4, I'm all given x, so I'm going to come up with a number, since I know x. Some people I notice actually did this process and then at the end substituted in 1 and got the derivative and there's nothing wrong with that. It's your choice. I prefer this way using um, the other definition. I think it's a little shorter. So my constant is 1. I'm told that it's 1. So I, x is approaching 1 and I'm going to have x minus 1. 
So f of x is 2 over x. f of 1 is 2 divided by 1, so I'm subtracting 2. So now I have a fraction, and i got to get a common denominator, which is x. And so that all divided by x minus 1. So that gives me 2 minus x, or 2 minus 2x over x times the reciprocal of x minus 1. I'm going to factor out a 2. I guess I could factor out a minus 2, and I get negative 1 plus x over x times 1 over x minus 1. And negative 1 plus x is the same as x minus 1. So now I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 1 of a negative 2 over x, which is a negative 2. Letter G. I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 3 of a negative x squared plus 1 minus, well, i got to figure out what f of 3 is. And that's going to be a negative 9, looks like, plus 1. So I'll be subtracting a negative 8, which is plus 8 over x minus 3. So this gives me a negative x squared plus 9 over x minus 3. I'm going to write this as 3 my, excuse me, 9 minus x squared over x minus 3. This is a square. This obviously is a square. So I have a difference between two squares, so I have, I have conjugates. I have 3 plus x times 3 minus x over x minus 3. These are opposites, so when I simplify that, I get negative 1. So now I have the limit as x approaches 3. And what I'm going to do is take that negative 1 and distribute it through here. So I have a negative 3 minus x. When I plug in 3, I get a negative 6 as my slope to my tangent line or my derivative. This one I'm asked to figure out the slope of the tangent line. And it's x is moving to a negative 3. So x minus a negative 3 is x plus 3. I have x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus. Now, if I put a negative 3 into there, I'll get 9 minus 6 plus 1. This is 3 plus 1. I get 4. So now I have x squared plus 2x, 1 minus 4 is minus 3 over x plus 3. I need to factor this top. x plus 3 times x minus 1 is that quadratic. Those simplify. So now I have the limit as x approaches a negative 3 of x minus 1. I can substitute a negative 3 in there and get a negative 4, and that's my slope. So I'm going to use this on the, this equation. Can you find the equation of the tangent line? Well, the equation of the tangent line needs slope, which is a negative 4, times x minus a negative 3, which is x plus 3, plus my y value, which was 4, which I figured out right here. And so that was that. And so what you're getting when you get this back is, uh, if you get a 5 out of 5, I'll just say 5 out of 5, and you won't have any comments. If you don't get a 5 out of 5, I'll tell you which ones you got wrong and why you got them wrong. So again, you can take a look at this. This will be online, and you can watch this video. And if you still don't, if you still have questions or you have comments, you can... Uh, Shoot me a text or an email, and I will get back to you. All right. Hey, Kruger. Yes, sir. Um, so when I turned it in, I just turned it in as like the doc, so I didn't turn any of my work. Uh, is it okay if I send you another thing with my work on it? Yeah, I always require work. Okay. Okay. All righty.
we were doing uh, two, two, is that correct? Am I right on that? And yeah. we did some notes yesterday and I did one proof, correct? Yeah. Did I prove that the derivative of cosine is negative sine? Is that the one I did? Yes, that is the one you did. Jordan, you are perfect. Okay. Jordan, I'm not perfect. You see how scribbly this is? I don't like it when it's scribbly. So you know what I do? I scribble it out, which does not make it any better. So I'm going to do the other proof. Okay, Jordan? And one of those will be on Friday's quiz. But you'll have the notes, unless you're taking a little nap right now. Which could happen. So here we go. I am proving, prove that if f of x equals the sine of x, then f prime of x, its derivative will be the cosine of x. So I'm going to start out with my limiting definition. Jordan, did I use h or delta x? I cannot recall. You use delta x for the cosine equals negative sign. So I'll use h this time, just because I want to be a person that can shake it up, OK? And I'm going to have the sine of x plus h minus the sine of x all over h. Now, I'm going to look at this, and I know this can be expanded using trig. And I wrote it down because I always worry I'm going to forget something. And it is the sine of x times the cosine of h plus the cosine of x times the sine of h minus. So that's what this is expanded. Okay, so now I'm going to write minus the sine of x all over h. I'm going to rearrange these. So I have the sine of x times the cosine of h minus the sine of x plus the cosine of x sine of h. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate them into two fractions. I'm going to divide that by h, and I'm going to divide that by h. And I can do that because they all have a common denominator, h. And then I'm going to factor out a minus sign on the first one. I'm going to write limit as h goes to 0. So I'm going to have a minus sign of x, parentheses. This will leave me with a negative cosine of h plus 1. And I'm going to put a little time sign there. And down here, I'm going to put the h under this first one. And under here, I'm going to put another time sign. I'm going to put 1. Because 1 times h is h. I mean, that's, my dad would say, that's not rocket science. You should have already known that. Okay. And then plus, and then he'd say, and I sent you to college for you to know that. Oh, yeah, you did that. And so over here, I have the cosine of x times the sine of h over, here's my h times 1. So using um, my properties of, of limits, since I'm multiplying here, and if you take a look at it, I am really multiplying this. I have four things here. I have this. I have this thing right here. I have this thing right here. I have this thing right here. And I'm going to take the limit of each of those. Well, h is changing and does not affect x. So I'm going to get the minus sine of x. 
This, however, is in terms of age, and that's one of those special trig identities. And I think I talked about it, about it yesterday. It is zero. It's the destroyer of all numbers. Plus, this isn't going to be affected by age, so it remains. And this is another one of those trig limits, and it's going to be one. So I'm going to end up with zero plus cosine of x, which is the cosine of x, and that's the end of my proof. Okie doke. Uh, Grayson, did you take the ACT yesterday? Yep. Was it a fun experience? Yeah, it was pretty good. Had you ever taken it before? Uh, no, we were going to take it last year, but then it was like two weeks before we did school uh, got like canceled. Oh, okay. So that's when that happened at that time. Okay. So you guys never had taken, you hadn't done any practice. I don't suppose you, can you practice online the ACT or not? Uh, yeah, there is stuff. I was doing stuff last year, but I didn't really do anything this year because ACTs don't really matter anymore for col or many colleges. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Well, they didn't matter when I went to college. You know, what mattered was my beat. My heart was moving and I had money. That's the only thing they cared about. Now it's like they have standards. They just don't let anybody into Bemidji State anymore. You guys know I graduated from Bemidji. Have I ever done my beaver call in class yet? Oh, I'll do it online. Then I'll be in the abyss permanently. You ready? I'm a beaver. You're a beaver. We're a beaver all. When we get together, we do the beaver call. So there, that's it. If that doesn't make your day, I don't know what will. All right. So now you guys all want to sign up for the Bemidji State. Winter has probably already started there. Alrighty, did we do these three? Yeah. I believe we did. All right. So this is right here. I don't give myself enough room in this. This is really an important thing in which I'm going to talk about for quite a bit. And it's the idea, first of all, when a function is differentiable, it is a function where there's a derivative at every point in the domain. So that means you have a tangent line at every point in the domain and you can determine its slope. That's what it means. And did I show you how to graph a function and its derivative? Did I do that? Yep. Okay. And so I think I started out with my fancy dancy TI and I had x squared, I think. Maybe the people were at the ACT. Grayson, were you here when I did this or not? Uh, no. No. Okay. Do you have a Do you have a TI? No, I have a Casio. Okay. Do you have uh, the fancy dancy Casio or the other Casio? Just the other one. Okay, I'm going to do a little reviewing on this, but I want to, because uh, I have some other seniors that were gone, I think. Uh, let's see, because I don't have everybody memorized who's a senior. Um, so if you're a cast, if you have a TI, uh, where you go to is math. I quit here, you go to math. And then you go down to line eight. And if you press enter, they'll put into Y2. Okay. And that's what I did. And I will do this on a Casio also. And then once you get to here, this means derivative, numeric derivative. And I'll show you how to use that again in a, in a different fashion later on. But you want to get the derivative of what was placed into y1. And if you do that, you go to variables or bars right here, press it, and you get a screen that looks like this. You go to y variables, you choose function, and you'll get y1. And you just press enter, and that gets put into there. All right? And then you have to follow it by a comma, which is above the number seven, and then type in your variable x, 
follow it by another comma, follow it by your variable X and then parentheses. Now, Grayson, I know this Casio is different than your Casio, but you're still gonna be able to follow along. You'll go to your graph and I'm gonna change this. Uh, where's my delete button? And I'm going to type in x squared. And then, Grayson, you have a button that says option, OPTN, I believe. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah, if you press that, you'll get something that says calc. Do you see that? Yep. So you press that. And then you have, this means derivative. This actually means second derivative, which we'll probably might talk about today for sure tomorrow. Okay. It's the derivative of the derivative. Now you don't get anything that looks like that. You get the words deriv, I think. Am I correct? With uh, a parenthesis? When I press the D divided by DX, that's what I get is the... Do you get it to look like this? It doesn't have the Y1 with it, but... No, but I could, I could get rid of the Y1. Does it look like that? Yeah. Okay, super. Wow. And then you go to VARS and you'll hit graph and you get a line that looks like this. Do you have that? VARS and then what? You see where it says graph? Yep. Press that. And do you get a line that looks like that? My Zoom keeps cutting out. I don't know why. It's been doing it all day. Okay. Well, way, oh, way to the left there, you'll hit F1 because that's where your Y is. And then you'll type in one, one and you'll get that. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got that. Okay. Good. And then you're ready to go. Just press enter and everything's slick. And then you can hit exit or you can hit draw. And it draws like that. Correct. And that equation is what, Zach? The derivative. What is the equation of that line? Um, it's the derivative of y. Uh, it's the derivative of y equals x squared. So, what's the derivative of x squared? That would be 2x, right? 2X. That's a, that line is 2x. Okay. All right. Yeah. So those that graph and that line have a relationship. This tells you the slope of all the tangent lines that are on there. Okay. Um, so I'm going to exit out of that. And I'm going to go back to this. So I'm going to again. Oh, I know what I'm just going to do. I'm going to look at this because it's, it looks nicer on this one. So here's my TI. And I want to talk about what locally linear means. Locally mean, linear means if a function is differentiable. then if you zoom on any point on F, the function will appear like a line. Okay, and I'm going to show you that. Go 
Everybody have that? I don't want to cover up too soon. So this is uh, f of x equals x squared. And I'm going to zoom in at this point, at the vertex, OK, at 0, 0. And so I'm going to hit zoom in. And I'm going to press Enter. And I'm going to press Enter. And I'm going to press Enter. And you see how it's getting the curves becoming flat? In fact, right here, it looks really flat. Now, I'm really, really, really close to zero. If I trace and move a little bit to the right, I'm at 0 0.001. And I'm barely above the x-axis. And if I keep going, here I'm at 0 0.01. But it almost looks like I'm exactly on the x-axis. And I'm not very in it. I can go the other way. OK? And it's kind of flat in there. And if I zoom again, let's go zoom in. You can barely see right here it coming up. So it's perfectly flat in there. That will always happen at a point that is differentiable. That will always happen at a point that's differentiable. And that's one of the techniques to determine if something's differentiable. Um, Karina Miller, have you ever been to North or South Dakota? Only once for a baseball tournament. That was it. A baseball tournament? Yeah, my brother had a baseball tournament down there. This which like, one? Here. Which one? I mean, uh, which, North Dakota or South Dakota? So we're in South Dakota. Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls. So as you're going to South Dakota. You know, mm -hmm. enter South Dakota, doesn't it look flat? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, it looks like, um, and if you ever get a chance to go to the Black Hills, it's a real flat drive till you get to the Black Hills. Okay. okay. That's local linearity. Karina, have you ever seen a picture of the earth like from outer space? No. Never? Mm -mm. Really? What do you think it looks like from outer space? Is, no clue. <laughs> do you think it looks like a ball? No, I think it's kind of flat, but not super flat. Do you think the Earth is flat? Not really. Like it's in the middle of like curve and not flat. Really? Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can get a picture of the Earth. You've never seen a picture from Earth outer space? Mm -mm. Okay, let's see if I can do this. This would be a miracle if I could do this. Outer space. This is one of the most. Oh, which one would I like? I think I'll choose this one. Oh, let's choose this one. There's a whole bunch, but why doesn't it just give me one big picture? All right. So I'm going to see if I can share this. Share screen. Do you see this, Karina? Mm -hmm. OK, so let's see if I can slide it up because it's bothering me. You see this right here? You see me pointing to this? Yeah. You think that's flat? I think it's curvy. <laughs> I think it's roundy. Don't you? I can not see it. like your. Yeah, we see a YouTube video. Yeah. You see me? And we see a YouTube video. It says Channel Videos YouTube Studio. Oh. 
honestly, we could see the picture that you had before when you were doing the other thing and you pulled up what other thing you had before you redid the screen share. Okay, I do not know. Are you still, do you see anything now? No. Oh, okay, let's try it again. I do not know why. Do you see it now? You we see got it, Kruger. We yeah. got it. Okay. So, Karina, do you see this right here? Mm -hmm. That's the edge of the Earth. The sun is about to come up on the Earth. You see how it's curvy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at it. Here it's curvy. Here you're on the moon and it's rising. It's roundish. But if you look from South Dakota, it looks flat. That's because mm -hmm. we're zoomed in on South Dakota, where South Dakota is just a tiny, tiny part of the entire Earth. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing this. I'm going to share this other part. So I am going to show you this graph. This is a very popular graph. And Sarah Gama, do you know, it's my favorite graph because my middle name starts with V. Okay, do you know the name of this graph? An absolute value graph. Absolute value. And the function of absolute value looks like this. I bet you know this, right? My, I've changed my name. I used to be Charles Van Kruger. Now I am Charles Absolute Value Kruger. I think it's cool. My family thinks it's stupid, but okay. So why do you like it? I like it, yeah. So Sarah, do you see this part of the of the function right here, where x? You know, it's continuous. Would you agree with that, Sarah? Yeah. Every, I mean, the absolute value of zero is zero, right? Yeah. Guaranteed. Okay. The absolute value one is one, the absolute value of two is two, the absolute value is three is three, right? All along here. So what would you say is the slope on this side? A positive slope? Yeah. Do you know exactly what slope it would be? Now think about it, zero, zero, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six, seven, seven, I'm going up one over one, right? So what's my slope got to be? One. One. Okay. Over here on this side, it's negative one, one, negative two, two, negative three, three, negative four, four, negative five, five. So its slope is what? Negative one. Negative one, correct? Well, over here, the tangent line would have to coincide with that side of the graph. Would you agree, Sarah? Mm -hmm. And yeah. the tangent line would have to coincide with this side of the graph, correct? Yeah. So the derivative of this side would have to be what? What's the derivative of this side? What's the slope of the tangent line on this side? Would it still be one? It still would be one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to graph the derivative. And we'll talk why there's an empty circle here later on. But it would go in that direction, correct? Mm -hmm. And over here, the derivative is what? Negative one. A negative one. And it goes in that direction, correct? Mm -hmm. This derivative is not continuous, is it? At zero. No. Where as when I did this, uh, let me do this.
if I would draw the derivative here, here's y equals x squared. It's nice and curvy. And the derivative is continuous, isn't it, right? 2x is continuous right here? Yeah. We're here. It's not. So this function, even though it's continuous, is not differentiable at zero. It's differentiable here. It has a derivative of one. Over here, it has a derivative of negative one. Over here, it has a derivative of negative one. Right here, this has a derivative of one. But right here at x equals zero, there's a disconnect. So this continuous function is not differentiable. So what we say in calculus is at sharp points, f is not differentiable. You can't take a derivative there at sharp points. I'm going to show you another one, a different type of graph. See if I can draw it. I always have an issue with drawing. So continuous graph. Um, correct, Ella? Correct. OK. Ella, concave up or concave down? Concave down. Does it look like a smile, like part of a smile? Concave up. Yep. Does this look like kind of a frown? Concave down. Right, so there's a change of a concavity, correct? Correct. So whenever there's a change of a concavity, that is the only time that you have a tangent line that passes through a graph. That's the only time. And here is where that tangent line. Now this doesn't have any sharp points, does it, Ella? This is a nice curvy graph. But right here, there's a tangent line that's vertical because there's a change of concavity right there. And you can kind of see it. It's temporarily kind of flat if you look at it. What is the slope of this tangent line, Ella? Zero? No, a horizontal line is zero. What do we say for a vertical Oops. line? Undefined. Undefined. So the slope of this tangent line is undefined. So at 0, 0 here, because it has a vertical line that passes through it, it is also not differentiable at 0. So here are two different graphs, one that has a sharp point and one that has a vertical tangent line. Let's see if I can come up with a vertical, if I can come up with one like that. I don't want to do this. This will take forever. Let me do it on the Casio because it's a lot faster.
Well, this isn't this isn't the graph that I wanted, but maybe I can uh, figure that out in a bit. But this is one with a sharp point. Would everybody agree? Yeah. So this, since this has a sharp point, this graph is not differentiable at zero because there's a sharp point at zero. Um, let me show. Let's take a look at the graph. Let me uh, select and turn on its derivative. Let's look at its derivative. So here's its derivative. So as you approach this point that's not differentiable, as you approach from the left, the slopes are going to positive infinity. They're getting very, very, very steep there. As you approach from the right, they're getting very, very negative. They're starting to turn this way. Oops, I should, I pressed the wrong button. They're becoming very, very negative. So if you look at its derivative, there's an asymptote right here, isn't there? This derivative is not continuous. It's not continuous at zero. This graph is not differentiable at zero, though it is continuous. Let me do one more. Let me get rid of this one. Let me put in absolute value. Here's absolute value. Here's the graph of the derivative. Always negative one here, always positive one here. It's not differentiable at zero, even though it's uh, continuous. So what we say is this. A continuous function is not always differentiable. And here are my two examples of graphs that are different. Sharp point, vertical tangent line. However, all differentiable functions are continuous. So way back when we we're talking about how to justify whether something was continuous or, or not. And I said, well, if it's differentiable, you automatically know it's continuous. And I said, you don't, you don't understand what differentiable means yet, but you will. So this is one, if, you, if they tell you a function is differentiable, they're telling you, guess what? You better say somewhere down the road that it's continuous. And we do on that intermediate value theorem, just for a little bit of review. We do on that intermediate value theorem. I believe our time is up. So we'll finish the notes tomorrow. I believe you will have some time to work on in class and then we will uh, do the quiz on Friday and your textbook assignments 2-1 and 2-2 are due on Friday. And I know I, was, I had a little bit confused, I, but I fixed that, somebody pointed that out to me. So I'd like to wish everybody a good day and we will see you tomorrow. Mr. Kruger, yes. For problems seventy-five through eighty on like two point one, where it deals with the differenti differentiality or whatever how you pronounce that, yep. how much work do you want us to show for that? Uh, let me. Can I look at it quick? Yeah. Just review the problem. Chapter two, where's my chapter two? Okay, which one's 70 through what?
75 through 80, sorry. What, oh, okay. I'm gonna right by it here. What page is it on, do you know? I believe 104. Alrighty. Yeah, so it's going to ask you. There's absolutely no work you have to do. Okay, so you just you, like for seventy five. Yeah, so seventy five. You should be able to look at the picture and tell me it's not differentiable. Oh, where it is differentiable. So you're going to look at the graph and say it's from negative infinity to three, correct? And from yeah, and three, then from three uh, to infinity. Right, and you you can use. Um, you can use your uh, interval notation. You know what I mean by that? The bracket and the parentheses, right? Yeah, was that, that's the one. Can you use the other one? Yeah, you can if you want, if you prefer that, I don't care. Okay. And then does it make sense on 76 why negative three and three are not differentiable? Yeah. So that answers a lot of your questions, doesn't it? I bet. Yeah. Yeah, you just gotta look at the picture and- uh, And then just do it from there. Right, yeah. Okay, okay sounds good. Yeah, it's not, it, they're higher numbers, but it's not too bad, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, have a nice day.